So we're used to doing what they're told. Thanks, fellas. There'll only be one further move after this. Um, and so I would ask you, if you're listening, I would ask you to stay exactly where you are after the Mass. Uh, we'll hoist this cameraman up to the highest point and we'll get you all, we'll get a shot of you there, all smiling, saying cheese. Because um, we'll never get to get you all together again. So I think we're ready to start. <laughs> Where two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, I am there among them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. As a shingle so there, on me kind of a tower gold, uh, big ani her father gang, August, is Mahan Rod has new lesson after. Con, uh, the Hagui and the Euskalari at all, uh, him heroin, as Lena Firna, August and a winter at all herself, August and a Lena at all be all force. So without more ado now, I think we'll start the, the mass. There might be some little. Uh, rubrics mightn't be all that, but the liturgists here won't mind. I heard a definition of a liturgist or um, the distinction between a liturgist and a terrorist. You can dialogue with a terrorist. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> to prepare ourselves now to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us ask God's pardon for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world and have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Before starting the prayer, I forgot to mention that this Mass fulfills the Sunday obligation. So there's no need to go tomorrow, though. It's recommended if people want to go uh, to do so. And now we pray for peace and unity. God our Father, source of unity and love, make your faithful people one in heart and mind, that your church may live in harmony. By stead be steadfast in its profession of faith and secure in unity. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> the theme of the Mass is love, so the readings will illustrate that theme. First reading. If you fear the Lord your God all the days of your life, and if you keep all his laws and commandments which I lay on you, you will have a long life, you and your son and your grandson. Listen then, Israel, keep and observe what will make you prosper and give you great increase, as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you, giving you a land where milk and honey flow. 
Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the one Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Let these words I urge on you today be written on your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Responsorial Sam, the response is, I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my savior. <clears throat> my God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. Response. I love you, Lord, my strength. Long life to the Lord, my rock. Praise be the God who saves me. He has given great victories to his king and shown his love for his anointed. Response, I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My dear people, let us love one another, since love comes first from God. And everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God, because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God was sent into the world his only Son, so that we could have life through him. This is the love I mean, not our love for God, but God's love for us when he sent his Son to be the sacrifice that takes our sins away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my own joy may be in you, and yours be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall not call you servants anymore because a servant does not know his master's business. <coughs> I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. You did not choose me, no, I chose you, and I commissioned you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you anything you ask in my name. What I command you is to love one another, and this is the Gospel of the Lord. Some of you may remember the Euler Maxima, the big study hall, and over the old stage there was a scroll, Eloquentia Religioni Ancilla, or something to that effect. But you're not going to get eloquence here tonight in a homily. The definition of a speaker is a man talking, so I'm just going to talk. And forever I've felt like Thing, I'll say it, to be plain and parochial sermon like Cardinal Newman's. A story told of a, a squire in England, and he used to put ten tenpenny pieces on the bench in front of him on a Sunday morning when the priest would start giving his homily. And for every minute he went beyond the time, he took one back. So, <laughs> you're not going to be kept long. <laughs> I learned that. But from the readings we see that Christianity is a religion of love. Perfect definition of God 
one that Augustine or Thomas Aquinas, even Bonaventure or Caderan or you name them, they couldn't fathom that. A lifetime. All eternity they'll be struggling with it. Process theology. It'll be pouring into them. And that'll be increasing their capacity to love more. And so it'll be going on for all eternity. God is love. And that means that God can't hate. He destroyed himself if he hates. He can't hate anybody no more than I can hate Hitler or anybody like that, Stalin or anybody. I can hate Hitlerism, Stalinism, but never the person. So God is love. He hates evil, but he loves the sinner. And that love is made manifest in Christ Jesus. God so loved the world that he sent his only Son. God is love. Christ is love. Christ is God. Therefore, Christ is love. And we're told in the Gospel that at the beginning of the Last Supper, St. John is leading up to it and he said, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The end of his life. The end of his capacity to love. And at the Last Supper, didn't he pray, Father, may the love that is in you be in them and I in them. That that very love that the Father has for the Word and the Trinity, pouring in from one to the other, may be through Christ in us and Christ in us. Truly, it is a religion of love. But not alone is it a religion of love. It is a religion of loving one another. We just don't bask in the fact and say God is love and sit back and revel in it, contemplate it, that is good, but it doesn't end there. We must love one another. And at the Last Supper, Jesus got up and he was a great believer in the object lesson. Well, that starts off, and here start chasing through my mind, I pursue them, and the weakness I have reminds me of another story in the science lab, if Mr. Broderick is here, where the uh, teacher wanted to impress something on the youngsters, so he called them up round the sink one day and got a bottle of milk and smashed it into the lab. There you are now, he says, no use crying over spilt milk. He get a lesson, and the Jews love doing things like that, so the Lord wanted to impress this on their minds, and he got up, took a towel, geared himself, got a basin, went round and washed their feet, each and every one of them. Then he sat back and said, You know what I have done to you? I, your Lord and Master, you too must wash one another's feet. Another hair, another rabbit. Will I mention it? I don't know. I was down in Waterford there last May, and I called it this house. And I don't want to start a cult, and the person in the house wouldn't like it either. 